Uh, all right, the read on all of this from the former Ohio Secretary of State, Ken Blackwell, a very close Trump confidant, National Taxpayers Union senior fellow, Maddie Dupler, and uh, last but not least, CampusReform.org's Cabot Phillips. Cabot, um, the president has confused some people on this, and maybe deliberately, I might sign it, I might not sign it, now I will sign it. That could change before he takes to that podium, but what do you think? I won't believe anything until I see the president saying something from the podium today. But this does seem like it could be him wanting to appease his base and show them this wasn't an easy decision for me. This was not a popular move amongst the conservative base for a few reasons. One, it, it did nothing to change the funding of Planned Parenthood. Very minimal funding for the border wall. No matter what Republicans are trying to spin this as, this is not enough substantive funding at the border wall. This is big government. This is a swampy bill, as you would hear from Trump, some Trump supporters. And I think him waffling back and forth on this, it was more of him showing them this is not easy for me to do. I wanted to stand firm, but I had to sign this. And I think it was him trying to appease his base to show them that he was willing to, uh, to stand up a little bit. But ultimately, I think this was uh, a move where the Republicans know the midterms are coming up. Government shutdowns usually reflect poorly on the party in power, and Republicans knew that they would probably catch the brunt of this fully if they weren't able to get a deal done. You know, Matty, the fact that it's the president who's going to outline this minutes from now, maybe seconds from now, um, what do you think of that? <laughs> so I'll try to talk uh, quickly, Neil. So here's the thing about the Omni. Chad is absolutely right. The only thing that happens if the Omni doesn't get signed into law is that we get a worse deal. Now, it's true that the Omni is not a great conservative bill. There's way too much spending in there. There's not a lot of priorities that were able to get tucked away. And that's because Democrats had to be brought to the table to get this thing over the line. Now, let's also be very clear about one thing. Shutdowns are liked by one class of people and one class of people only, and that's politicians. The American people don't like them. Hmm. The American economy certainly doesn't. Markets don't like them, as you discussed earlier. So politicians who are grandstanding for no reason other than their own political gain are the only ones who benefit from a shutdown. This was true in 2013. It was true earlier this year when Democrats tried to shut down the government over DACA as well. So there's a no-win situation here for this bill not to get signed into law. What needs to happen is this bill needs to get signed into law, and then the president and Congress need to continue to get back to working on the things that work for the American people, things like the tax reform bill that was passed last year. Let's stop keeping taking our eye off the ball and focus on the things that matter to Americans, which is higher paychecks at home, which is being able to keep more of their own pay and invest it in vehicles that allow them to have savings over time. All of these things were induced by the tax bill. I'd like to see the president keep his eye on the ball there. All right. But invariably, Ken, what happens is the president then tweets or says something about something else that might be perfectly justified in his eyes, but gets your eye off the ball where the constructive things that are happening with that tax cut and more money in people's hands. Then, in other words, he steps on his own otherwise good message. What do you think? Well, let me just say, as a board member of the National Taxpayers Union and the, the Club for Growth, uh, this big spending bill is a real disappointment. I, you know, I'm used to the chicken little. Uh, the sky is going to fall if, in fact, uh, we stop government for a couple of days. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I, I'm one of the cheerleaders that when these guys are in session, they do more harm than when they're out of session. Uh, and look, I, I actually think we have to, again, continue to look at the correlation. You, you increase the debt. You, you accelerate spending. You, in fact, impact in a negative way the benefits that you have from economic growth and job creation. Uh, this, this, is a, this is really a bad deal. That being said, uh, we have engaged this president uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a conversation and in the in negotiations. My, my concern is that when you draw, throw up on the screen uh, the, the, the amount of the, of the wall that is impacted by $1.6 billion, uh, given the enormity of the, the, the challenge, uh, he's, he's way off target there in terms of what he, what he promised. Uh, and I think there are those of us in his camp that have to constantly push back when we think that uh, things are going in the wrong direction. Uh, this is a big government spending bill, uh, and we just have to accept it. Now, if he's negotiating behind the scenes and he's going to get some additional benefits, my concern about that is that that's add-ons, that, that just increases spending. It, it, it doesn't it increases the deficit. So, uh, look, this... See, this I don't is, think he's this, worried about the deficit. I think he, I, I think he's he's not he's not he's not just a nut about that. He's not about the debt commission stuff and all that. I could be wrong. I just don't think that that that's well, a priority. And, 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 and his, and, his, his and, history and Neil, has indicated that. You know, I, I look. I, I think you you show 
uh, some concern for the deficit by saying, look, uh, we are going to hold spending. Uh, yes, but we're going to increase spending. He's not we, we're, spending. Well, well, and well, the Republicans, look. they run the town, and they, they're not doing that. And, and that's that's a concern. Look, I'm, I'm with Diane Black on this. Uh, I, I think her budget that passed the, 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 that was influential in the House yeah. was, was the right direction to, to, to go. Look, and, and look, we cannot act as if uh, we're, we're, we're there just to be yes men and yes women. We have to show that we have a, a, some guiding principles that, that serve the president and his agenda well. All right, all right. By the way, now we're getting a better idea. I think that that big pile of paper you saw to the left of the podium there where the president will speak, it will not be in the briefing room. Apparently, he will make this a quick announcement. So it won't be a presidential presser per se. Uh, he will, uh, that, that is the, the, the spending measure itself, I believe, all 2,200 plus pages of it, and that he will grudgingly sign it but doesn't like it. Um, but that's just the latest we have. But, you know, um, Cabot, this is the latest thing we talk about, and Ken touched on it, as did Maddie. Uh, no one likes this, but, but it, 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 they're saying it's going to avoid a government shutdown, et cetera. But it's really for, for your generation and young people who are gouged. I mean, Ken and I just come under. Uh, the, the, the rope for this one, that our Social Security looks okay and everything else. But, uh, Kevin, I hate to break it to you. you you're, you're out. You, you, I'm, you're out. It looks like Maddie's yeah. out. That's just the way it's going to be. Neil, you better include me in that. Don't call me older than Kevin right now. And I'm just saying I hope you, you can deal with that because both parties have abandoned any sense of fiscal discipline to help out guys like you and, and Maddie. Yeah. What do you think of that? Well, I was at the White House yesterday with Leadership Institute's campus reform and with a group of millennials from around the country talking to the president about issues that are important to us. And one of the common themes that kept coming up in talking to other millennials in the room was, look, we are worried about the budget. We're worried about the, the, the debt that our country is getting into because we're going to be the ones paying for it. That was an issue that came up did he repeatedly. Any, did he care about it or did he just say, well, the, you know, I can't be bothered. You're all young and I don't want to I don't want to hear you whining. Much of the talk from the president was about things that he was doing. There was talk on free speech, about the opioid crisis, about See, but tax not reform. The budget, not the there deficits, wasn't as much conversation about the budget, uh, right. but that, it's certainly not for a lack of people in the room caring. And I think it's important to remind young people that this debt is going to be passed off onto us. And, and also, when you get back to the, to the bill itself, it's not just what's in this spending bill. It's also how it was passed. When the Democrats tried to push through Obamacare, saying, we'll pass it now, we'll read it later, we'll, we'll just, let's just make sure we get it through, Republicans were mad, and rightfully so. And the same thing with this, a 2,000-some-odd page bill that they people did the have exact two days same to go through. Thing. You're absolutely should, right, Kevin. It should they anger did the everyone. the exact same thing. That's a very good yeah. point. 